I think it is a duty incumbent on me to make this my last official communication. The citizens of America are now possessed of absolute freedom and independency. At this auspicious period, the United States came into existence as a nation. And it appears to me there is an option still left to the United States of America. That it is in their choice and depends upon their conduct whether they will be respectable and prosperous or contemptible and miserable as a nation. This is the moment to establish or ruin their national character forever. For with our fate, will the destiny of unborn millions be involved? There are four things which I humbly conceive are essential to the existence of the United States as an independent power. First, an indissoluble union of the states under one federal head. Secondly, a sacred regard to public justice. Thirdly, the adoption of a proper peace establishment. Fourthly, the prevalence of that friendly disposition among the people of the United States, which will induce them to forget their local prejudices and policies, and in some instances, to sacrifice their individual advantages to the interest of the community. These are the pillars on which the glorious fabric of our independency and national character must be supported. Liberty is the basis. And whoever would dare to sap the foundation will merit the severest punishments which can be inflicted by his injured country. It is only in our united character as an empire, that our independence is acknowledged, that our power can be regarded, or our credit supported among foreign nations. I have thus freely disclosed what I wish to make known before I surrendered up my public trust to those who committed it to me. The task is now accomplished. It remains then to be my final and only request that these sentiments be considered as the legacy of one who has ardently wished on all occasions to be useful to his country and who even in the shade of retirement will not fail to implore the divine benediction upon it. With the greatest regard and esteem, I have the honor to be, sir, your excellency's most obedient and most humble servant, George Washington.